How many do we have? Morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yay, we have a quorum. Am I right? We probably should do a roll call just to make sure. Uh, Dave um, is on another call that he was afraid he wouldn't have been able wouldn't be able to get off by 10. So he said, if we have a quorum to go ahead without him. Yeah, we do have a quorum, Franklin, uh, looks like. Um, we have you and Phil, Jeff, Joel, Steven, and Zilda currently showing. Um, I've uh, sent a note to Hadley to ask her to let me know if uh, she is on and just in a mode where I can't tell. Can you give us an idea how many attendees are here? That's legal, right? Not their names, but just how many. Yep, just uh, give me a moment. I see 11 call-in users, 10 call-in okay. users right this moment. Okay. I just thought the data might be uh, useful. Um, okay. Well, let's roll on to uh, the minutes of the November 14th meeting. Is everybody okay, the minutes of the November 19th, November, November 19th, 19th meeting that were distributed. Can I have a motion, please, to uh, have an approval of those uh, minutes, please? Well, let me let me ask before we go to the motion stage. Let's let's see. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? Because I had to dig to find them. They were distributed with the invitation to the December second meeting, which right. um, was postponed to today. Right. I, that's what I'm saying. I had to I had to dig to find them. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? Um, I, I don't have any, the, the minutes are not inaccurate, I, I, but it's barely more than a roll call. And I would hope that going forward, we would include, I am not a person for big, long meetings, but I think um, including a little more information in our minutes would be uh, more appropriate going forward than, than the, the bare bones, as I said, basically roll call that we've had for the last couple of sets of minutes. I don't know how other people feel about it, and I don't think it prevents us from signing on uh, uh, from approving these, but I just think we could do better. I'm just following the historical practice, Franklin, of our minute taking, but if we want to make a change, then we can, you know, the, the committee can make that determination. Well, I think that we I personally think that we should have more than a roll minute? call and, and one sentence. Um, I don't think it's fair. Uh, I don't think it's it's particularly proper as a, it's not improper, but it doesn't actually serve the purpose of minutes. And I don't think we should force people to have to find our link to go on and watch the whole meeting uh, just to find out, um, you know, what was discussed. Any event, that's my view. These are the barest bone minimums minutes I've ever seen in 45 years of being serving on boards. So these are minutes that are in the style of the minutes of the last 10 years of the committee. Um, so I'm, I'm just following the precedent that was set by uh, the former director. You said that, and I'll say again, I think we could do better. Shusha, I'd be so interested in what you think we to ought to do. In other words, we may have a precedent of 10 years worth of minutes, but that doesn't necessarily make them clear, useful, or, or, or the way that you would encourage us to have them. So uh, I think a, a draft in the form that you would uh, would recommend uh, uh, would be appropriate. Uh, I, it's a little harder. All right, I'll take up that suggestion. I'll take up that suggestion for our uh, next minute, and we can okay. see if there'll be you know any kind of change. May I have I, a motion to approve the minutes for the November nineteenth meeting? I, just let's finish up this discussion. Let me respond to what Stephen says. I I ha I've been a secretary on more. <laughs> on more uh, uh, committees than I can, and boards than I can think of. And I have, a, I have a format that I like, but it all depends obviously on the, on the nature of the organization. I think at a minimum, there ought to be some um, indication of what the subject matters were. I, I do not believe personally in the, Stephen said that, Franklin said that. But I, I, I've often written it up with a lengthy discussion was had on the subject of public comment at our board meetings. If there's no decision, you don't record a decision, but you ought to have 
that we discussed it. Or sometimes I say, you know, a lively discussion was had about X. But I think sort of the subject matters, particularly early on, I think when we're when we're down to, uh, you know, mostly formatting, it, it matters less. But um, I, I think you ought to give a clue as to what the substantive issues were that were were discussed, e even if it's just a few sentences, you know, or, or a half a sentence on each one something more than than nothing i i just don't think it really serves the purpose of anything the 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 ones we've i guess been historically doing don't serve much more purpose than a roll call i've i've been fortunate to have or i am fortunate to have 150 years worth of newspaper history reflected in our annual meeting minutes and i do the same thing because it is historic of historical value to cover some extra material than than being simply official so let's do that going forward in the meantime i'm happy to make a motion to approve these minutes second yeah. do we have any objections hearing none the minutes are approved um, okay. And Shoshana, I don't know if um, you guys said, but I think Peter is having problems logging on. So I don't know if if uh, or someone can guide him through it. So let's I see pause him for as a, a moment. And give him a chance. now. Could you move him to panelist? Kristen, I see that he's joined as an attendee. Could you move him to be a panelist? Yes, I will. Thank you. Let's give Peter a moment. And then we'll move on to the annual report. Yeah, I see that he's been added. He's been added as a panelist now. Welcome, Peter. So, Thank so, you. Um, we have everyone except Hadley. We have eight members on. Okay, this is the test. Peter, are you here? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? We can. Yes, Great. We can. Thank you. And who else has joined us? Because we started with six. We have eight now. We have um, you. Bill, Jeff, Joel, Peter, Stephen, Zilda, and David. Okay. Um, so now we move on to we we for those of you who just joined us, we approved the minutes of the November nineteenth meeting after a discussion about having somewhat fuller uh, minutes of our meetings going forward. So let's move to the draft of the annual report. Everybody, and I personally want to thank everyone who really spent time uh, going over uh, uh, this report. I think it got significantly better um, uh, over the course of the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, I was a little disappointed that we didn't change our quote, which was uh, which was Dave's suggestion, our our introductory quote. But uh, since I had developed a lead in around it, I guess it's just as well to have left the sunshine in place. Just Kristen, um, it looks like Hadley is trying to get in, but is unable to. Um, maybe if you resend her her personalized invitation, that would help. Um, Sorry, I so keep muting myself. Know. Yep, we'll do. Okay, thank you. With with those words, um, with with Franklin's words, do we want to um, move on to the introduction that uh, has um, was circulated uh, yesterday? Well, I, I I actually have a comment on on formatting, which is less important, but kind of maybe an easy place to start. Um, in my version, our table of contents for the last. And drafts has um, been smushed up at the top. Can we do some spacing that has it fill the page a little more and look a little more attractive? Absolutely. This is just a function of the red line and the cleans and all those versioning that we've been doing. But when we get to I, I, place I'm, where I'm, sure, I'm sure that it was, and I but I just wanted to make sure it got caught because it doesn't uh, look right. The other thing that looks um, a little odd to me, and again, I, I'm not positive what our past practice has been, but under legislative recommendations, it seems like at least on some of our reports in the past, we've done A, B, C, D, E, F, G, instead of just having them hang out 
since our other categories all have A's and B's, and I was curious why you did it this way and, and how our, more important, how our committee members felt about it. I don't think it was a purposeful intention there, Franklin. I'm happy to do whatever everyone wants to do as far as identifying. I, I don't feel strongly about it. It just looked a little odd to me. Um, well, I think the court decisions don't follow that format, so I'm, I'm, it's, I don't know. It's pretty minor to me. <laughs> yes, it was well, it is minor. It. it is minor, and I began by saying these were minor. You did, you did. So I guess but I just. I, did it to <laughs> I like the alphabetizing of it because it makes it easy for me to find it when we're talking about a particular topic. Well, that's sort of what led to my comment too. I think it's I think it's easier if you have alphabetizing just like you do um, some of the earlier ones. Um, I don't know. And I, I mean, al adding letters, not alphabetizing the topics. Yeah. No, that's what I that was what I was uh, suggesting as well. I, I just think it would look better. Of course, it's minor, but it does help <laughs> if you're saying, oh, legislative suggestion B, clarify FOIL. It just makes it a little easier to find. And and this is also, I mean, it's actually a, not exactly minor, but just going forward. Um, our draft of, as of yesterday has the same date on the front as our draft of November 23rd. And I think it's easier, and so do our emails discussing the third draft, even though we were on about the tenth draft. I think it's easier if somewhere in the new draft we have a date that reflects what draft it is, so that when we have them all spread out in front of us, we can figure out which one's the, the latest. I, I've taken to writing my own dates up in the upper right hand corner, but. Um, it just seems to me that that going forward it'd be easier if we if we uh, clarified what date the draft was in the body of the draft um, instead of suggesting that the one you circulated yesterday afternoon, Shoshana, is the draft dated November twenty third. So um, it's those just are the last time I prepared a draft, Franklin. But I understand your point, and I could put a circulated date. Um, yeah, that's future. all. I mean, you, even if you leave the caption the same, you put a date on it so that when we print out, you know, six copies of, <laughs> of it, we we can actually figure out what the order was of them, which is what I was having trouble doing. Um, okay. Comments on the introduction. All right. We have no comments. All right. we're, we're content with what we've got. This is this is Dave. And the one sentence that's underlined in the introduction. Is that still is that in? Is it out? Um, which the, paragraph? The fourth paragraph, the last sentence, at least in the version I'm looking at, is still underlined. Yep. It, it's a it's that is a, a reflection of Bill, Bill's latest uh, edit, which formed the basis of the red line that I circulated yesterday. I see. Is it is it underlined just to draw attention to it, or was it something that we're supposed to discuss? That's all I was asking. It just it's, shows it's new. It just I shows see. new text. There's I see. In the red line, it's underlined and cross out. Yeah, I, I think it's an important thought. I I might just do a little wordsmithing on it to say something like, the committee believes that this is an issue that warrants. Further investigation by the executive and legislature, le legislature, or something like that. That sounds good to me. Works for me. So the the committee believes this is an issue that warrants it warrants further investigation. Uh, gather the investigation. Okay. For, further, or, yeah, investigation or something by the executive and the legislature, something like that. So that. Yeah, that you can so leave it so that. That's fine too. Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. Why don't we? So the, the this is so, read. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, would we be okay thinking like um, instead of investigation, would we be okay with keeping the gathering of facts and data as it is? Because I think investigation sounds like there's like a like a crime or something. It has a negative connotation. Yeah. 
So that the sentence Joel would read, the committee believes that this issue warrants the gathering of facts and data surrounding the issue so that surrounding that's, it. That's my preference. The committee believes that I'll have to work with that. How about, how about just, that, Shoshana, how about just the committee believes that this is an issue that warrants fact gathering by the executive and legislature so that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's good. I think it's good. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And maybe, you know, maybe I would consider italicizing that or leaving that underscored others because it's sort of a recommendation in the introduction. Yeah, I was even thinking going forward, we might have a whole category devoted to this since there's some skepticism about the anecdotal evidence that's been brought before this committee. Well, I think you could just make this make that sentence a standalone paragraph without underlining or italicizing it. That's an idea. Is everyone okay with that idea? Fine by me. Good. Okay, if so it shall be. Any other comments on the introduction? Any other comments on the rest of the report? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Just to, to move the legislative on. Amendment. Uh, there, there, there haven't been many comments uh, to the rest of the body of the report recently. Um, there's been like one or two. Does anyone have anything to say about the latest um, kind of consensus that we developed. I don't. I don't know whether um, there's anything new. It doesn't. It doesn't really appear that there is. Other than to, oh. as Franklin pointed out, maybe put headings, uh, alphabetical head headings on the legislative recommendation section, which we will mm -hmm. do to make it easier to. <clears throat> So the motion to approve is gonna is gonna uh, reflect approval subject to the changes to the underlined sentence on page one and the formatting and certain formatting changes. Um, does that sound like how the motion should read? Well, you know, I depend upon. Uh, I depend okay. upon Bill Baruso to uh, to read through and, and make all of the necessary grammatical <laughs> changes. I think I already did that, Stephen. <laughs> I think you did. So, so just, and I thank you for it. And I think to, to just to clarify, yes, what you said is accurate with the addition of, um, I know that I circulated a clean yesterday so that people could read through, but that clean did incorporate the 1123 draft changes that we haven't had very many comments on since that time, um, just so that everyone understands, it would be approval essentially of the clean from, yes, from yesterday with the addition of the headings that Franklin talked about and the making of that underlined sentence on the first page its own paragraph and reworded as we discussed just now um, as we were, as David, as David was proposing his suggestions, and we all kind of agreeing to that. So that would be a very long-winded way of saying that's what we are about to decide on. Let me ask one question about uh, page eight. Uh, in the middle of the page, there is um, a citation that has two underscores. Is that the way they should be, or do the underscores mean some information would be filled in there? That that is the the the, the citation to Buffalo Police Benevolent, Benevolent Association. That this hasn't had its official citation assigned yet as of this morning. It's a new case, so I'm leaving in the reference to the fact that it will be reported in the the New York the New York State Reporter Third. Um, it, that's it, it, that's the, a the standard case. citation. Thank you. It, the, the, it shows for sure in the West law that it will be reported. It just has not yet been assigned a page number and a volume number. You'll see that I made a change to the, um, the court decision where I added the official citation because it was finally put in, in that case from September. So I've taken out the slip opinion citation and added the, the official reporter citation. That's ultimately what 
that benevolent association case will look like. Yeah, I only had two weeks of law school. I didn't I didn't attend <laughs> that course. <laughs> So, committee members, are we ready for the motion to approve the report as discussed and identified in that motion? motion? A motion. We have a motion. I'll second. Bill second. Do we have anyone All, in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so we have unanimous approval. Um, on to other business. I, I just have a, a comment on on presentations. Um, I know this was a strange year. Half of our data for this year. Hello. Can you all hear me? Yes. I'm hearing yeah. chimes and <laughs> and the like. Um, I know that half of this year was was uh, uh, you know under the the gem of of um, of COVID, but we only had 23 presentations, which is a huge drop from prior years. And I, I, without commenting on the past, I'm hoping that going forward, I know that Kristen um, uh, did something on December 3rd. But can we be more proactive in finding our either our old audiences or new audiences? Because uh, there's certainly a need for for, for more training of the sort that we do, and it's an important part of our mission. This is a question for the staff. Certainly, with respect to the uh, presentation that was given on the third, that is uh, going to be a, uh, we hope, a monthly or every two monthly effort rotating between um, open meetings and FOIL. Those presentations are available on the website. We've had some requests for for having those kinds of things available on the website for people to tune into at their convenience. So certainly um, we'll be doing that. Just to note, I think Kristen had uh, more than 100 people attend the presentation on the 3rd. Um, and those audiences are our traditional audiences who have in the past reached out and asked for training. And what Kristen did was solicit from those audiences um, questions that they particularly wanted her to answer during the presentation, and then she answered them. Um, so we will do more of that, um, and then there'll be sort of an archive of those kinds of trainings available on the website as well. Um, I think as more people get more interested in focusing on this topic again, we'll see a livelier response to, uh, or, or requests will start coming in again. Um, to do more of the types of presentations. I can't guarantee that in the short to medium term, they're going to be live again, but eventually they will. Um, and we will continue to um, be, be as responsive as we can and reach out to folks that that need training. Well, I, I applaud having, having um, something online that people can watch. I, without denigrating that, um, having attended uh, several um, uh, COOP training sessions, there's a lot of value in, in the live presentation and there's a lot of value in the questions that get asked uh, by the members, which may or may not be explained in the, in the canned version, but I would encourage a return to more um, live presentations um, since we are back up to having two staff members able to do that. And um, so that that was just a comment from me. Uh, I uh, Franklin, uh, I would suggest something slightly different now that the technology has developed. I think there's presentations and I think there's live, I mean, and presentations and, and live question response. But we're really talking about, I think, is is now the opportunity to have a library indexed by responses that may in fact be answers to live questions, but the ability to drive down an index to, to find a particular uh, response to something that may be germane may avoid the necessity for a presentation or, or serve in, in, instead of, of having a, a live question answer. I agree. 
do we have um is there a recorded uh, presentation or something that I, I could view um I, I wanted to explore some perhaps non-traditional audiences um to connect them you know to to cook uh, you know the, the staff to learn more about this um so is there like a but but I want to make sure that it makes sense. So is there like a recorded presentation that I can view? Yeah, we just said that the, re the presentation from December 3rd is is available on the website. Available. I couldn't find it. That's that's what I'm, I'm I don't know where to says, look for it. If you go to, I would like to view training recordings. That's where you find it. There's you like know, I would like to bar. That that's actually a hard. That's not indicative because I. I ran into the same problem Vilda did when I was looking for something last week, and I now don't remember what it was, but there it was under, I would like to. Um, maybe it would be, maybe it was the meeting recordings. I've forgotten what it was, but that's not an intuitive, um, uh, at least for me, <laughs> and I'm old, but it would be better for me to have meeting recordings or training recordings and, and maybe the index that Stephen uh, records. And now I'm I'm going to pat myself on the back because it was 30 years ago that I I won a free trip to Las Vegas press conference by saying what a, a newspaper would look like in 2010. And one of the lines that was in it was, he who controls the indexes controls the world. So indexing is the key. Yeah. Franklin, this is a good time for you to raise this issue because we are in the middle of a website upgrade that's being managed for us. And we are just been given sort of the skeleton of what the new website would look like. So we are in a position now to make user friendly type of changes. And one of the things that we have discussed is uh, making frequently requested content more visible. We've been constrained in the past by, by the formats that have been historically available. To us for identifying content. I mean, for example, the the news feed that is on the current version of the Coog website is not how necessarily I would like to see it. And as we move to the new website, we'll have a different way of delivering the sort of highlighted content. So as as Kristen and I look at the new skeleton of the website, we'll be in a in a position to identify that kind of frequently requested or uh, content that should be highlighted better um, going forward and we'll ensure that we make those choices to the extent that they're in our control. I, I think that's great, Let, but let's have a line for our annual reports with all of our annual reports, not just the current one with the training sessions, however you want to set it up with our meeting recordings so that we don't have to fish for them. We've already made huge progress. You know, I, I, it used to be that our meeting notices were posted somewhere on the Secretary of State's website, not on our own website. So we we are making progress, but but I think it's still a little cumbersome. So good news that we're uh, the new uh, website will help a lot. The new website will help a lot to reduce that cumbersomeness. That's been a that'll be it has been and will be a priority of mine mm -hmm. to fix that presentation. So that it's easier for users to uh, find what they need. Okay. The other only other business. Anyone else have any other business? Then I think our next uh, item of other business is to call for public comment. If there is anyone wanting to make public comment, I thought we agree we we're going to discuss if we want to. <laughs> And we can discuss the other business could be the other business could be, are we going to continue with our 45 year old practice of, of calling on people who attend our meetings? Yeah, but I think we agreed that we're going to set up a process, right? And we wanted to be done with the report to then have a process so that we could abide by that process. I, I don't agree that we have had a history of letting just the public speak. I mean, before we used to have meetings in person and, and no one would speak unless they're actually there. And mo most of the time people only came if they were invited. So I'm not sure that just having anyone speak is just the greatest idea. But if we do, I, I would want to have limits on it. What kind of limits would you suggest, Bill? Definitely a time limit. Someone might 
just get the floor and stay with it. <laughs> any, any other limits? I mean, if somebody Delta wishes had looked into this, I think. If somebody wishes to speak formally, it, it seems to me that they could ask beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think so too. Maybe our past practice, based on my observation, uh, Kristen is better able to speak to what our actual past practice has been with respect to the staff receiving a request, for example, for someone to come and make a presentation on a relevant topic to committee members. That's how I understood the uh, the public interacted with the committee during its meetings. Um, but I will let her speak to what uh, her experience has been since she's been here for years, and I've only been here for you know eleven months or so. Shoshana's correct, and I think you know that several other I'm sure that we've been here even longer than I can 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 confirm this, Bill, Stephen. Um, in the past, we've had invited speakers certainly, but we have not just opened our meetings to public comment um, without knowing in advance um, who those speakers would be. Well, I, I, I beg to differ with that. I've, I've been on the committee for 10 years and I don't believe I've missed a meeting. And I cannot think of a single time when we've had an attendee who hasn't been invited to speak. Whether and and they've not all been a, a invited guests, um, but I can think of times when, for example, the NYCLU has shown up. Um, uh, 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 people from the CCRB have showed up, and and in every instance, they've been introduced to the committee because they're sitting there, and uh, have been invited to comment. I can't think of a time when that does, hasn't happened. I, I'll admit that we do not have throngs of visitors, but um, I can't think of a time when an attendee hasn't been invited to say something. I, I would disagree. Um, I, I, I actually have been off and on the committee, I think for 20 some years now, <clears throat> but have not made every meeting. Um, but, but I mean, I, I think the problem is there's a difference Mind now that we're doing these telephonically in terms of who shows up and how it would work. I, I think that, that um, Franklin is basically correct. When we meet in person, Bob was always careful if someone was in the room to have them introduce themselves and ask if they wanted to say anything, and and it always worked out. I think now that we're doing this online, where we have many more people attending, I do think it would be appropriate to have some sort of a process, whether that means registering in advance or putting a time limit in. I don't know, but. Why would we be afraid of hearing what people have to say if they're going to take the time to join us? The, yeah, I would just like a process. That's basically what I'm saying. I don't think we should proceed without having a process. And I thought that that was sort of like what we agreed. Yeah. I, I, I tend to think that this is a bit of a, a solution in search of a problem. I mean, we haven't had a problem yet. Um, it's not like our meetings have been monopolized and lots of people have wanted to talk. So yeah, but why I find don't we see how it works? Why don't we see how it works? I find it that is it, you know, I've run board meetings myself, you know, as many of you have been board members, you know, in other government entities and non-government entities. And I I said this from the very first meeting that I was, it's not about who's in at the moment. I think it's you set up a process that you are comfortable that it's going to work regardless of who comes in or not. You don't necessarily want to be like, you know, I, I don't think this is the type of thing where it applies if it's not if it's not broken, why fix it? So I I just think that if you don't have a process, you start improvising and then actually it comes across worse because it's sort of like, oh, why are you doing it that way? Is it because of me? And it's like, no, it is the process. We need a process. <laughs> Yeah, I think at a, at a minimum, we want to make sure that they're going to speak about something that's relevant to the to the committee's business. I, mean, I think that we had somebody speak at one of the earlier meetings that it really wasn't on point with what we do. But yeah, I think that was like two meetings ago. Yeah, I, I think my concern, I actually think that we could get a great deal of value from people, you know, speaking because my I mean, my my perspective is. Um, a records access officer, right, for the state, um, and we you know we all bring that. And so and there's so there's a lot more than just you know the, the nine perspectives on the committee. Um, so I think it's valuable, but I, I just think we have to have a process, or else we get sort of 
like Bill just said, sort of in the weeds where we get people who have, you know, they just want to file a complaint or they're looking for an opinion where they should be going to, you know, Shoshana first or, or things like that. And, and I don't think it's like a huge problem. I don't think we've had, you know, throngs of people screaming at each other on the phone, but I think it's better um, to just sort of ward off now when we could do something simple like, you know, they can, we can say, you know, you're limited to X number of minutes, um, you know, just get them a topic from them ahead of time so we can put it on the agenda so that we know, you know, where it, where it is and we can be structured like that. And then, you know, give them their time, um, make sure it's germane, you know, to the committee and, and that's it. Really, I don't think it needs to be complicated. I just think we need to have something. I agree. There should be a process. And I, I think that in the process, what we should consider is, are we going to have people speak for a certain amount of time? Is it on the agenda of the meeting, only the agenda items for that meeting? And then if they're not on that agenda items, maybe we could have some sort of um, time or process where people could present, but they would uh, kind of uh, ask beforehand, kind of to sign into the meeting ahead of time with the topic. Um, but I, I think, I think a process is definitely necessary here. One of the advantages of the technology that we have now is that it's asynchronous. It doesn't have to happen during the meeting and somebody could submit a recorded statement or a printed statement that we would have a link to that would allow us to, uh, uh, not necessarily tie up the meeting, but still offer anyone who cared to make a submission to um, um, submit a statement. That doesn't permit follow-up, Stephen. I, I mean, I love the idea of using technology, but but that doesn't that doesn't permit any interaction. Um, I, I, I agree with with Dave. It, it doesn't seem to me we've had a problem, um, and I, you know, I'm a process person, and I don't have any problem with requiring people to be on topic. Um, but I would suggest that while we promulgate our standards, we ask any speakers that want to speak today to keep to the topics that are on our agenda. No. The topics included in the annual meeting. In the no. Annual, well, I'm sorry. No, I object to that. I, well, I can, I finish, can I finish making my proposal? I know yeah, you're go a, ahead. The proposal is that we impose a time limit and we require people who want to speak to speak to the items on the agenda, which are the two topics that I have heard uh, people want to impose in the way of a process. So I would say a two minute or three minute uh, a time limit and limited to the topics that are included in our annual report. The reason I suggest it now is because we don't know when we'll be meeting again. Um, we had, we had strongly uh, uh, come together with the idea that we should meet in the first quarter of last year, and it never happened. So um, I, I don't know when we'll be meeting again, but I, I think we ought to hear from, from live people. And again, that's my proposal, is that we hear people subject to the two limitations that I've heard people say they would like to have included in, in the process. So I think, you know, I would sort of propose an alternate, Franklin, which is if somebody has something to say, they can, you know, send us, um, send to Shoshana, if she can distribute it to us. And then when we do have our next meeting, if we think as a committee that they have, you know, a lot to add or substantive expertise that we would, you know, um, that, that could help us, I think in the, the next report, which I don't even want to think about, but it's going to be here in a year. Um, that that would be how I would prefer it to be handled, um, you know, just so we have have a little bit of time to think about, you know, what we're coming, you know, what we're coming up on and what people have to say. Because I really don't think that we should be, I'm afraid that we're going to get sort of the complaint department, right? And and that's just not our role, in my opinion. Oh, I, I, I think the comments <clears throat> that we've had from reInvent Albany and other, um, and other groups are hardly crazies. Uh, you know, curling. Could I, could, I, could, could, could I respond to some of this too? Yeah. Or uh, I don't know, Vilda wanted to, but I, I think what Vilda was, I, I object to the notion that they have to limit themselves to our report. I mean, one of our agenda items is new business. Uh, you know, people should be able to come to us and, and raise issues that are within our 
domain. I mean, if they want to come talk to us about tax policy, obviously that, that's ridiculous. But the idea that we're going to, I don't know what we're all afraid of. And, and I don't, I'm not afraid of hearing complaints either. I know at the last meeting, people were saying, you know, what do you mean there's a problem with FOIA? We haven't heard complaints. Um, you know, we're here to understand where the, the system needs fixing. And if people want to come to us with ideas or problems that we might want to tackle, why shouldn't we hear from them? And, and if we're going to impose a two minute limit or a three minute limit, surely we can sit through three minutes even of some, you know, crazy, you know, nonsensical jabber. It's three minutes out of our lives, but you know, we are the open but government committee. Why shouldn't we hear? I from don't people? think that that characterizes David, what I stated, which is I'm happy to hear from them. Right. But we should adhere to that process. I don't want to open it up. Then they ask to speak and then they just get to speak. I think the committee as a whole should have the opportunity to decide who gets to speak and who they're going to hear from. Cause you don't have that much time together. Right. And this seems like a shorter meeting, but. I think that we need to have that process. So I feel very strongly that we have to find that process and we have to adhere to that process. I mean, I'm certainly not afraid of anything. I've heard a lot worse, I'm sure, um, than anything you was going to say to me on this. Um, but I think we, you know, for the respect of the members, we need to define that process and allow them to know in advance, you know, what's going on, who wants to speak on what. Otherwise, you know, we get ambushes, right? You know, I don't want, I, don't, I just don't want anyone to feel ambushed. I want everybody to feel like they're, you know, that's, that's how I feel about it. I think that there are two circumstances here, and I, and I, I can see exactly what Vilda and Joel are talking about in terms of setting a process. That's one issue. I see what Franklin is talking about, which is, is a, a parallel topic. But at this point, we need to distinguish between this meeting and the future meetings. This meeting, I think it would be interesting to find out if there's anyone that wants to comment before we decide whether they can or not. <laughs> Oh, you're so logical. <laughs> I agree. I think the proposal is that we not permit, and I don't support it, but I'm going to articulate what I think it is. The proposal is that we not permit public comment at this meeting until at some future date we have contemplated in some way a, a process. That would be my right? motion, but I also want to say that I don't think we've I mean, from what I hear all of you saying, I also don't think anybody has ever felt that we're not able to communicate with the committee any concerns that they have and they've been raised. And I know I've been getting emails from correspondents that whoever's sending it have asked that it be shared with the committee. So I suddenly, you know, it's not a public hearing that <laughs> I mean, it's a particular issue where there's questions asked as if we're like city council members or something like that. Um, so yes, that will be my motion that we, um, I, you know, that we establish a process to open the floor for um, uh, public comment, and that that process includes, um, you know, some time limits and you know uh, particular topics, and you know we can be flexible about it and put some parameters there. But that's precisely what we need a process. Because like without thinking about it, I know we had some email exchanges where the idea was exactly that. It's like, well, what it should be. Well, we should think about a process. Let's get the report done. So I'm like, okay. So I honestly like even I just didn't look for any possible alternatives or or things that we could consider as to a process because I thought we were going to do that after we were done with the report um that's it but you know and yes as a public servant trust me i've been in a lot of I mean, movies i love getting feedback because i want to make sure i'm doing my job in the best way and i'm not making assumptions as to the way that i'm doing is the way that people have been reached the way they need to be reached but i Builder, just, just so otherwise we're, disorganized just so we're clear Vilda, your motion includes the idea that we would not accept any public comment at this meeting or at any meeting until there's been some sort of resolution to the process issue correct okay i i can't shoshana shoshana we'll shoshana or kristen this is day i have a question is does the technology we're using today have the functionality so people can raise their hand yeah. yeah. Well, could I ask uh, that anyone who's in in the meeting who wants to speak show that by a, a raised hand so we know what we're talking about? 
You mean whether there's interest? I mean, yeah, if they want us to talk, just show a raised hand and we'll know. How and what is that going to do? And what I is that? Know if the, I would like to know if there are people here today who would like to say something before I pass a resolution I saying I can't talk. David, do you have that? Can you see the attendee list? I can see participants, yeah. Yeah, if you scroll not, down. Not panelists, okay. but there's a list of it. So there's, there's an attendee so list. So there's three three people who want to talk. Is that it? Yeah, that's what it looks like. I okay. can't see that on my screen. Can Just you scroll tell down. Us? Yeah. So I, I would recommend that we allow those three people to talk and set a Four. time limit. Well, listen, I'll just make a motion and I guess maybe that's the process, right? So I'll make a motion that we do not open the floor to public comment until the committee has a process for allowing such. That's my motion. I'll, I'll second that. And I, I strongly oppose that today to, to change our past policy uh, 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 at this meeting. I think going forward, I'm all for let's set a process. But you know, yeah, I really don't think it's or, or let people process. talk today. Yep. We've got a we've got a motion and a second. Do we have uh four more people who support that? Because I joined Dave. I, I disagree with that. I'm not gonna vote in favor of it. No, I, I agree with the motion if it doesn't include today. So I'm I'm there with Franklin and David for now. Okay, there are eight of us. We got three no's. I don't think the motion carries, unless my math is wrong. No, I see right. Peter moving his mouth. Yes, okay. I, I, I agree with Stephen on this. I don't agree with the motion to not let you speak today, but I believe in a process going forward. Yes, and that, that's my position too. Okay. So a counter motion would be we continue our practice. Or maybe that's I, 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 characterize it as that. We permit public think, comment unless and until there is some process no, developed by the could committee. I, could, Franklin, could I could I could I propose that's a not motion? Fair and, <laughs> could I propose a motion instead, which is right that, that we allow the people who are present today to speak for up to three minutes, uh, subject to an extension if, if the committee wants to hear more, but that we uh, agree that we will we will meet and develop a plan before our next meeting. I guess, that's too, I guess we can't meet and develop a plan. That's that's that's, too, our, yeah. that's two motions that that, yeah. that really the order ought to be: shall we have a process to set up something in the future? One motion, deal with it. Then let's deal with today. Fine. I second that. <laughs> Until we have I'm not sure I followed that. <laughs> Joel, Joel, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Sorry, yeah, I just was doing what I was saying with Joel was I want to make sure I understand the motion is, is that I, I, I understand what Stephen's saying. We're going to split it up. So the, the first motion is to understand that we will not take public comment in the future until we have a process, but that uh, does not include that. No, basically, it was to me, it was Vilda's motion without dealing with today exactly I, i'd go right a right further so except for think, today in the future yeah right. no I, I, i'm slipping through I'm well i'd like to modify that because i don't think that's exactly what Dave's proposal was until we have developed a process we will permit public comment because this committee has a way of not meeting till you know if that would incent us never to develop a process never to agree on a process so, I, to be I think we have to permit public comment. I think we have to move forward to develop a process if people feel that's appropriate. And until we've developed the process, we, we have to continue our practice. I, I was just being simple. I thought Vilda was saying, let's set up a process for the future. And, and that's all I was saying. I was saying nothing about what happens in the interim. Well, let's let's say develop we a so let's say we meet in in February and the topic on the agenda is public comment and we talk. Um, we're not going to permit public comment on the public comment. You're, you're, you're intruding on the simplicity of what I'm saying. Let's set up a process. Steve, Steven, I second Steve's motion. This is funny. I don't have any problem setting up a process. 
Although I don't think it's necessary. I share Dave's view that this is a solution in search of a problem. But listen, can we follow at least the process of like rubber rules of orders perhaps? There's a motion. I've second the motion. Can we vote on the motion before we move on to something else? There's a place for discussion in there in Robert's rules. Well, then we gotta get really strict with like, you know, points of clarification and give me two minutes and a minute and all of that. So um, I don't think discussion is a minor point in Robert's no, rules. No, this is a very collegial group and we'll sort it out. Yeah. Well, can we go back to the motion? So could we, we keep this discussion up then we'll have... stay for public comment? <laughs> <laughs> could we, could oh, we yes. have maybe could we make a motion to ask the staff to provide a recommendation prior to the next meeting? Maybe that's the best way to do it. I don't, right? That's a good idea, know. Joel. Absolutely, I'll second that. I, I would accept that as a friendly amendment. <laughs> okay, good, good, thank you. I'm good with that. Me too. <laughs> The other part of your motion, Stephen? There was no other part of the motion. I well, basically Joel has said let's set up a process to to um, to do this, and we'll have the staff look into it prior to our next meeting. Okay. And in the meantime, uh, that's not part of the motion. We can deal with that after we deal with this one. That's, that's why I was asking. What I was moving on to stage two because it seems like we have a consensus. Well, is there anybody opposed? If, if we have a consensus, then we don't need a vote. <laughs> that was my thought. So no opposition to that? No. Okay, cool. So we'll wait for the staff. Okay. Okay. So now we need to deal with this meeting and meetings going forward and so that we develop this process. We have to deal with this meeting. I would, I think that Franklin, the first question is to find out from other people if there are people who would wish to speak. There are four. We did, there are four. Okay. And I agree with David that uh, his um, proposal to let this people speak today. For three minutes. Right. So that's a motion and a second. Second. I don't know that we need a motion. It's a continuation of a of a practice. This, Franklin, there's a motion and a second. Let's just vote and move on. Yeah. <laughs> Is it three minutes you said? Yes. That's the motion. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No opposition? Okay. I am well, opposed. Build a, a, a raise your hand. hand. I'm opposed. Okay. I, I can't see that. Sorry. So That's we have okay. one, one opposition. Okay. Any abstentions? Okay. Let's call for public comment. Kristen, you have to help us with the logistics of this. Okay, we have four people who have indicated and I am going to attempt to take them in the order that I notice that their hands go up. The first is Tom Speaker from reInvent Albany. I'm going to unmute him for three minutes. Oh, Welcome, Tom. Hi, can you hear me? I can now, yes. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, my name is Tom Speaker. I'm a policy analyst with reInvent Albany. Uh, thank you for holding the meeting and allowing me to speak. Um, do you want to say that we greatly appreciate the work that Coog does and we hope the committee um, will turn its attention, as we said, to what me and many others perceive as serious problems with the oil process, in particular wide and widespread and extremely lengthy delays. Indeed, like we and many other foil stakeholders perceive foil as verging on dysfunction in New York with small agency foil staff often overwhelmed by the volume of requests. So. In an analysis of the MTA FOIL process we did in 2018, we found that not a single MTA sub-agency we FOILed provided records within the legally mandated deadline. 
at one sub agency spoilers with open requests have been waiting an average of 215 days for records. Um, and we think the MTA is no worse than many other agencies. The bulk of the 200 plus FOIL requests we filed with state and local agencies over the last decade have taken more than six months to be filled and typically include only partial or heavily redacted records. So per the November 25th letter sent to you by ourselves and eight other groups, we do urge the committee to begin to collect basic data about the number of FOIL requests agencies received, how long they take to provide the records requested by the public, how many requests are denied and the reason they are denied, and how much agencies spend per request and other basic information. Um, as of today, the committee has no objective way to determine whether FOIL is working in New York State and lacks even rudimentary information, for instance, how many FOIL requests are submitted annually in the state. So, you know, gathering basic information about FOIL will take time, um, but we think the committee needs to get started. And if that requires legislation or some other form of support, that should be recommended, um, you know, if not in this annual report and subsequent reports. Uh, Congress itself has passed laws requiring federal agencies to provide detailed public reports on federal FOIL requests. And there's a tremendous amount of data online that allows for congressional oversight and continuous improvement. Um, so, yeah, we hope to see New York State take similar steps to establish greater transparency. Thank you. Thank you. Franklin, Franklin, this is Dave. Could I just follow up with that? I have a, that, that raises a question in my mind I was meaning to raise with uh, Shoshana, but just to put it on the table, you know, one of the things FOIL requires is that um, a copy of every denial of an administrative appeal be sent to the committee. And I just would be curious what we do with those and if there's any way uh, to organize them, if there would be anything we could learn by either sorting them by agency or um, city or something to try to get a sense of whether there are problems in certain areas of FOIL or, you know, by the, the nature of the exemption or something. Just how hard would it be to, to, to make use of that data? I mean, there's a reason the legislature required us to know when things are being denied. And I don't know that we've ever actually used that information. So, David, I'll respond to that. Um, we do receive those um, documents, and it's a statistic that we reported to the, the committee members this year, for sure. I don't know what about in prior years. Um, what we do with them is read each one, and if a particular one looks to us like it requires affirmative um, intervention by committee staff to make suggestions or point out areas where we think something has gone sideways with respect to the, uh, the information that's being provided, um, we reach out. Um, and up until I got to the committee, um, the only thing that was done with them after that process was that they were filed for, and retained for three years. Since I got to the um, this role, we've started logging basic information about each one. So we now know and can, for a brief period, of, you know, for just the last, you know, month since I've been here, we will be able to do basic um, data mining with respect to certain fields that we are collecting data on such as maybe agency, like you had identified. Um, so, you know, entity, you know, and basic, basic other fielded data so that we have in the past received FOIL requests for some of this material and been unable to respond to them in a meaningful way because we didn't log it. But hmm. now we're logging basic data about it so that we can respond if we get them. So that's terrific. That is what we get and that is what we do with it currently. That's that's terrific to hear, Shashan. I'm really glad you you started that. I wonder if you could share with the committee the data that you're capturing to just see if people have thoughts on whether they're. I mean, since we're sort of starting afresh with that, we should we should think carefully of that we're getting. Like, for example, do you do you log the the grounds for the denial or the exemption at issue, um, which would be another way of seeing if there's certain areas of the law that generate more problems than others. I know that we currently don't, but I can share with you the fields that we're collecting. And if anyone has uh, thoughts and comments, we can, um, you know, certainly consider capturing more 
field of data on those that have been um, given to us, given Thanks, you know, uh, in the last. Yeah. I, I would really be interested in looking at that. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks. I would like to see it. I agree that this is terrific. Can you share with us how many appeals that were brought to our attention that the staff commented on or, or found that it needed to be addressed in, in the last year? So we can, we can pull that number for you. Yeah, it'd be nice to know historically for the last couple of years, I guess how many times those were sent to us and we felt that some correction or comment needed to be made on them. If we could mute everybody, I'm hearing a lot of interference. Um, let people unmute themselves when they want to comment, but if we could, if we could mute um, Kristen, I think that'd be easier to hear. Okay, I think we're ready to call our second um, speaker. Sure, Franklin. Just, I mean, just so you're, the, you're the only one that was unmuted at the moment, so I'm not, I'm not sure where the noise was coming from. I'm not um, sure our, either because I'm sitting in a tomb here. But well, um, <laughs> it does, it's it's fine. The next speaker is Paul Wolf, and I am going to unmute him for three minutes. <clears throat> Welcome, Paul. Hello. Can you hear me? You can. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, sorry, the phone's ringing in the background. Um, my name is Paul Wolf. I'm president of the New York Coalition for Open Government. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today. I certainly appreciate our support having the public speak at your meetings. I don't think it has to be complicated in any way. I, I would simply just have a spot on your agenda when you will call upon people to speak. I think a three minute time limit is reasonable. Uh, I wouldn't support pre-registering or pre, you know, uh, stating what it is that you plan to speak about. I think just simply calling upon meeting, as, calling upon people as you're doing today, and letting them talk for three minutes, uh, I think will be helpful to the committee and helpful to the public. So I don't think it has to be a complicated process. Um, I'm glad to hear that you're working on updating your website. Uh, one of the things I would love to see on the website is there is no archive of meeting agendas, meeting minutes, meeting videos. I mean, if I go on a city council website or a county legislature website, they will typically have, I can look at, you know, the meeting agenda from January of this year or January from 2019. I can see the meeting minutes. A lot of places are posting the meeting videos. It's all right there, so I hope when you're uh, doing your website uh, revamp that there's some some way that that stuff will be posted on your website for the public to see. And I do agree that uh, uh, something more than bare bone meeting minutes would also be helpful. I mean, just some some indication of the topic or discussion that occurred uh, rather than just, you know, restating the votes that occurred would be much more helpful to the public. Um, it's also difficult to keep up when you folks are meeting. I mean, most bodies have a set meeting date and time. You know, the city council meets the first Monday of the month or the third Monday of the month. And I understand with your schedules, that's, you know, probably not possible, but it would be helpful to uh, have the uh, meetings posted uh, at least a week ahead of time. I know this was kind of a shorter notice posting because it was a rescheduled meeting. Uh, but it'd be great if there's some way to get on an email list. Some local governments have a notify me link where you can sign up and put your email in and receive notification of when they're meeting. Um, the only way I typically find out about your meetings is I have a Google keyword search that pulls uh, anything referring to open government. So I get an email in my mailbox that your meeting has been posted. But it would be great just to get a uh, an email notice from the committee itself. Um, and I'm not sure when you uh, put your meeting uh, notice up, if you send out a email or a notice to the news media, or if it's just simply posted on the website. Uh, it would be great if there is if there is an email list going out to the media. Hey, Paul. We yeah. thank you for your time. Have a nice day. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker um, has a username. It appears Mary Shia. I'm going to unmute her for three minutes. 
Welcome. You're <laughs> unmuted. Okay, thank you. My name is Maria and I'm um, in Channel Wanda, New York, and I'm also a board member of um, the um, New York Buffalo chapter of open government. And I guess I just feel that, um, you know, a process might be important, but to devise a rigid process, I think it lends itself to prevent freedom of speech and inhibit citizen participation. Some may feel uncomfortable or intimidated. So the, I believe it was Mr. Schultz who said, let's see how it works. And Mr. Wolf just said, let's give people three minutes and why be afraid of public participation? I don't really support pre-registering because there might be a topic during um, the meeting that I might want to ask a question. So to prematurely ask a question ahead of time, I think precludes that. So thank you for the time. And I just hope that there's always an opportunity for somebody to speak at the end of the meeting. Three minutes would be fine. Pre-registering, I don't support. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. All right, our last speaker that I'm going to welcome is listed as John Public. I am going to unmute John Public for three minutes. Thank you. John Public, you are unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you very much. Well, first of all, um, I would like to say that I'm experiencing two committees on open government. In other words, there's the committee that's meeting today, and then there's the staff who function as though they are the committee on open government. I know that people, I know I myself have written and asked for, for correspondence to be forwarded to the committee, the you, the committee, who are in this meeting, um, but I've not received any acknowledgement from the committee that it receives these documents. And there's a great deal of evidence from the way in which the meetings are being conducted and the kinds of topics that are being discussed that there's no way that those that my correspondence has been forwarded to the committee. So some of the things that I'm noticing that are very problematic is that you uh, the, the legislation says the documentation is supposed to go of the appeals is supposed to go to the committee but the committee doesn't get them you've already affirmed it's the staff that gets them so it depends on which staff decide which documents they're willing to comment on it's not clear that the staff actually review each one for conformity with the law and in fact one of my one of the Kind of, uh, documents I've been trying to get to the committee is my own perceptions of the staff's hostility to the accessibility requirements that are in the open meetings law, the staff's uh, discrimination against uh, 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 failure to even deal with the problems of the foil that they themselves are uh, uh, not necessarily respecting. So let's just talk about the fact that you as the, open, the Committee on Open Government are bound by the Open Meetings Law, and you're also bound by the executive order of the governor. Okay. There are no transcripts of your recorded meetings. That violates the governor's executive order. It is frightening to me that this committee doesn't even seem to be familiar with the, the tenets that it must be respecting. There are no true minutes. That's respect required by the opens meeting the open meetings law there are no posting of the documents under review at your meetings and that violates the open meetings law if you have an active you know website and it is regularly monitored etc so yes it is at the discretion of the committee but i don't believe the committee makes these decisions at all the staff make all decisions there's um, no posting at the login site that a fake a fake id may be used to log into these meetings and that too is against the, the committee and uh, the uh, open meetings law. Interpretations in public, uh, what do you call it, uh, advisory opinions that have said you may not require, you will chill speech if you require the names of the people who wish to speak and the people who attend. And yet I hear the committee talking about how it wants to impose something that's specifically forbidden by the law. Okay, now the last meeting, Franklin, um, the chairwoman, Franklin Stone, asked for comments she was totally unaware that they were all blocked by the staff that was an absolute perfect example. thank you john public we appreciate your comments okay we've had all four speakers have had their opportunity to speak for three minutes everyone franklin is saying that she's not able to unmute herself i'm not sure why but i will unmute her 
No, I wasn't able to. I had a comment on um, just to follow on Paul Wolf's comments, the two speakers ago. Um, one of the problems we have with scheduling meetings is our vacancies. There are two, and I just want to put this on the record, there are two gubernatorial vacancies and the members that were associated with them have, we've not had a full complement of members actually attending meetings um, for two full years, not since 2018. Um, and both the staff and the committee have raised this repeatedly and gotten basically silence uh, from the governor's office. So I'm hoping that be preferably before our next meeting, we'll actually have the two more public meet two more public members appointed by the governor that are required by law. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to make a comment, they're welcome to, but I just think that that's something we ought to have on the record that, that causes a problem, both substantively, because we're supposed to have six public members and five gubernator uh, five governmental members, uh, but also um, the core, it makes a quorum very difficult for us. Franklin, this is Dave. Can can I comment on the last speaker? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I, I just I just I, I feel like I, I would like to publicly state a couple of things in response to our last speaker. I, I understand the frustration sometimes with how FOIL works and open government. We're all we're trying all trying to move to better systems and, and more efficient systems and keep things going. I, I do want to say that you know the committee functions through its staff. And we have confidence in our staff. The staff keeps us apprised, to my knowledge, of issues and brings major questions to us. It's not like they're operating independent of, of the committee. And I'm not quite sure who you are since you've chosen not to identify yourself, but I will say that that information is forwarded by the staff to us and and you know when appropriate we we respond. So I just I don't want to leave the impression that the staff is out there acting like rogue agents because I have full confidence in what they're doing. Thank you, David. I concur. Any any other comments from committee members? Or are we at the brink of actually adjourning for 2020? I also <laughs> want to concur with 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 David. Uh, sometimes a response is um, is not obliged, not required, and appropriate. Yeah, I agree with what Stephen said for the record. I, I think that that's a good summation of my thoughts as well. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. No. A second? I'll second it and say I really do enjoy these, these meetings and the people who participate in them. <laughs> All right, all in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. We're done for the we're done with our meetings and our annual report for the year. Happy New Year. Bye, everybody. Happy everybody. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye. Stay, Stay safe. healthy. Enjoy. Bye.